Hello everyone, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah, your host. Thanks for being with me today. I wanted to tell you about a uh, sweater saga that I had over the past year um, in knitting my first lace cardigan. And um, it starts off kind of sad and slow, but hopefully finishes with victory. So um, Veronique Avery is a uh, Quebecois designer um, who puts out a lot of really great patterns. I love her style because it's elegant and classic and I could see um, investing time in making her pieces and then having them in your wardrobe for you know the rest of your life. Um, they're just they're just that nice. So I'd been wanting to make one of her patterns for a while. Um, it's called Fuse, and it's kind of this origami um, concept for a sweater. So it's a cardigan, an open front, and but it has a lot of extra fabric in the front. And then what you can do is um, wrap the two kind of floppy sides around and connect them in the back, and then it makes like a cowl front um, closed sweater. So you can wear it open or closed. Um, and that just really appealed to me with my kind of um, I guess I'm trying to go for funky bohemian with my personal style. Um, and the sample sweater was knit in sort of medium gray shade, which of course would go with anything. Um, and I definitely wanted to make it. So I had gotten a gift certificate from Rick a couple of years ago for Quince and Company yarn. And on a whim I had bought um, gray, not, not knowing really what I was going to make. I thought I was going to make a poncho. Um, but then I found this pattern and counted up my skeins and sure enough I had enough um, of the quince yarn to make this. So I did what I was supposed to. I did a gauge swatch and I washed it and blocked it and counted my stitches very carefully and cast on with glee and off I went. And I knit until just before the point where you're supposed to join the arms onto the bottom of the sweater and sort of tried it on the best that I could and realized I had made a sweater that you could fit like half an extra person into. Um, and I, I kind of had a feeling it wasn't going quite right because I was running out of yarn really quickly and I didn't think I would have enough to finish. Um, so that was a huge disappointment. Uh, Rick and I spent an afternoon in the kitchen, um, sadly ripping out <laughs> half a sweater. Um, he was a good sport to help me with that. So, of course, as you're frustrated with, uh, you know, a big project gone wrong, everything kind of went in time out and I started working on some other things. Um, but then I came across the pictures again in my Ravelry queue and I thought, you know, I really do want this finished object. So I'm going to knuckle down and, and try again. Um, and I went down a needle size and I did uh, another sleeve, um, basically as, an, as my gauge swatch. And it was quite a bit tighter, um, and I thought perhaps I just wasn't going to get gauged. Um, but then when I washed it, it relaxed just enough that I had confidence that, um, that the sweater in that size would fit me. So I plowed ahead, um, and as with any re-knit, um, things went smoother the second time. The bottom band was knit more consistently. My picking up, um, what you do is you knit this long strip around the bottom and then you pick up the stitches and start the body and knit this way. And that looked a lot better, more clean. Um, and because I had sort of figured out how to do the increases within the lace pattern the first time, I was more consistent about that. So overall, it was, I think, worthwhile to re-knit, um, even though it was a little disappointing to have to get to that that state. Um, I did have a couple of episodes of having slightly off stitch counts and um, not really understanding exactly how the lace was supposed to be centered, but once I set that up and got going, um, things went pretty smoothly. I got to the point of joining on the sleeves to the body and was able to try it on and it fit. Um, so that was a very exciting moment, and then, yeah, it was a matter of just plowing through. Um, the only downside to having to re-knit something that you've knit most of the first time is that, you know, the honeymoon phase of being excited about a new project wears off a lot faster, and so then you have the slow slog of actually finishing the thing. Um, but I, I persevered, and over a couple of months got the, got the thing re-knit. 
finished knitting the um, shawl border that goes around the top at a knit night and I just had to sew it up and so that's been great. I haven't really been able to take the victory lap on this thing because I <laughs> I am a lazy blocker and this thing definitely has to be blocked to be fitting perfectly and um, looking great. So I haven't worn it because uh, it's not blocked and I decided to do that this weekend. Um, so it's still drying but uh, with any luck I will be able to wear it soon and I'll include a picture at the end of this video um, for you as well as update my Ravel Ravelry page. Um, yeah, it's been a great experience. I think I've grown as a knitter. It's been one of those um, projects that's pushed my skill forward and my patience forward and my my understanding of kind of a technical way of putting a garment together. This thing has some slightly unusual uh, techniques for joining the different pieces and, and finishing it off. Um, so in that regard too, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to expand my skills and become more confident. Um, I hope you like it. If you um, if you like Veronique's style, I highly recommend um, any of her patterns. They're well edited and they're easy to understand. They might be kind of a challenging knit, but it, there was nothing confusing in the pattern to me. So um, I can recommend them hearted, uh, wholeheartedly uh, that way. So thanks for being with me today and uh, take a challenge in your craft, whatever that might be. Push yourself to the next level. I encourage you. Um, it'll pay off.